Welcome to episode 124 of Build Your House Yourself University by HiU. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can make smart decisions and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. This week, I want to tell you what's going on with my specifications for all of my major subcontractors. Wait, should we start with a pop quiz? Mm, I think we should. Pop quiz. Do you remember what specifications are? We've talked about specifications in several episodes, including episode 119 called Understanding the Bidding Process. I'll have a link to that episode in the show notes if you haven't listened to that one. So do you remember what the specifications are? Well, specifications or specs describe what materials will be used to build a house and how those materials should be installed. While house plans are a visual diagrammatic representation of a house, specifications are like a written description. I've told you in previous episodes that you or your builder should be as detailed as possible with your specifications in order to make sure your house is built to a level of quality and beauty that's acceptable to you. And it's typically a builder or architect that can help owner builders with the specifications. When I asked my architect about helping me with my specs, he seemed pretty uncomfortable. Remember, I told you that for the last several years, he's been working on commercial projects. So maybe that has something to do with his discomfort. So then I went to one of my building consultants, one of my builders that I've been talking to, Jose. And he said he would help me. He said, yeah, no problem. He wasn't hesitant at all. So I met him one Saturday morning at Starbucks with my house plans and my notebook in hand, and I was ready to take lots of notes. But once we got into the conversation, he told me something that surprised me and frankly gave me a big sense of relief. Jose told me that most builders don't give their subcontractors super detailed specifications about technical materials and installation methods because the tradespeople, the subs, usually have more knowledge about their materials and installation methods as compared to general contractors. And that makes sense. Jose suggested that I do my specs the way he does his. He recommended that I submit the house plans to each subcontractor along with a specification sheet that details everything that I know I want for the house and let the tradespeople, the experts, spec out the rest. In other words, I list out all the detail that I possibly can, then leave the rest of the details to the expert opinion of the subcontractor. If we choose reputable subs that guarantee their work, we just have to trust that they'll install good quality materials. Now, occasionally, builders might have had a very good or very bad experience with specific materials or installation methods. And in those cases, the builder might request that the subcontractor either use or avoid that material. But most of the time, I'm told, the builder leaves the technical choices to the tradespeople. Now, I'll talk about my conversation with Jose in just a second, but I do want to let you know that I talked to my architect about that strategy of detailing the spec sheet as much as I could and leaving the rest to the subs. And my architect agreed that that seemed like the best course of action. He said, at some point, we just have to trust the people we're working with. And I agree. More often than not, good subcontractors with a good reputation have good reputations for good reason. What I've realized is that neither builders nor architects typically have the expertise to do comprehensive specs for every trade. They can't list every size and type of every wire that an electrician should use or every pipe diameter or plumbing connection that a plumber should install. That level of knowledge is almost always limited to the tradespeople. So although the advice that I've read to be as detailed as possible with specifications, that advice still holds true, but the operative words are as possible. Be as detailed as you possibly can with the knowledge you have. We got to stay in our own lane. We can't know it all. 
And we as owners, with the help of our builder and or architect, should give as much detail about what we know we want and leave the super technical detail about materials and installation to the subcontractors. With the added stipulation in the specs that all materials should be, quote, installed according to the manufacturer's written instructions, end quote. So let's talk about the conversation I had with Jose. We didn't have time to go over all of the specifications for all of the subs. So I wanted to start with the three major subs, plumbing, electrical, and mechanical. Remember, the mechanical sub takes care of the HVAC, the heating, cooling, and air conditioning system. For those major trades, Jose advised me to let the subcontractors give me a quote for all materials and labor except for fixtures. Fixtures are those pieces that are visible in the house and are fixed in place. Fixtures include things like faucets, tubs, sinks, appliances, lighting fixtures, and things like that. So the plan is that I will pick out and purchase the fixtures and the subs will pick out and purchase all other materials, the materials that are typically hidden behind walls like wiring and pipes. You'll also want to indicate on your specs that you want your bid to include the cost of installing the fixtures that you purchase. I think it makes a lot of sense for homeowners to purchase their own materials so that we can possess those materials if something goes wrong with one of the subcontractors. And so we can shop around for the best price without fear of contractor markups. But this arrangement of purchasing the fixtures and having the subs purchase everything else seems like a good compromise. It allows the subs to choose the materials that I have no knowledge of, and it allows me to do the fun part of picking out fixtures that suit my taste, my standards of quality, and my budget. Since I'll be picking out the fixtures, I can shop around for the best prices both locally and online. And when I've found what I think is the best price for different items, I can go to my subcontractor to ask if he can get an identical or similar fixture for a better price at his supply warehouse. Sometimes the subs can get and will give you a better price and sometimes not. So I love the option of being able to shop around for fixtures myself. For the materials needed by the subs that are not fixtures, Jose assures me that the subs can get a much better price than I could. Okay, so let's talk about each major trade and how Jose suggested the specifications be outlined for each trade. Now, this is a basic overview, and for some of the trades, we'll probably have to do another episode that goes into a little bit more detail, but here's the overview. For electrical, there are lots of lighting fixtures that will need to be purchased by me, the homeowner. But the electrician will purchase the wiring and electrical boxes and other technical hidden materials. Jose said we won't have to decide on exactly what lighting fixtures we want in our houses before submitting the specs for the bidding process. But it is best if we indicate on our house plans where we want the lighting fixtures to go and, if possible, what type of fixture, whether that's a chandelier or wall sconce or under the cabinet lighting or maybe even ceiling fans. We'll also need to indicate where we want recessed canned lights, what size and what style cans we want, if possible, and whether you want LED or some other type of light bulb. If Energy Star compliant cans and fittings are important to you, indicate that too. If you know exactly what brand of recessed lights you want, by all means, include that. But that's something you might leave to the electrician to choose. If you need a refresher lesson on lighting basics, take a listen to episode 103 called Lighting 101. I'll link to it in the show notes. Jose suggested that the electrician purchase the can lights too, but he said I could get him to quote the price for the cans, then see if I'm able to find a better deal. What else? Well, we should indicate on our house plan where we want electrical outlets and light switches, realizing that there are certain building code requirements that the electrician has to meet. Also think about USB ports and charging stations and where they should go. Not only will we want to let the electrician know about the interior lighting, but we'll also need to tell him about any outdoor lighting or electrical outlets we want, including uplighting and downlighting of the house and landscape, soffit outlets for holiday lights, and porch and deck lighting. 
Finally, we'll need to tell the electrician about any special electrical features we want, such as electric radiant floor heating, maybe in the master bathroom, or a standby generator. FYI, if you want a generator, you'll also need to let the plumber know since most standby generators run on natural or propane gas and plumbers are typically the ones who put in gas lines. You might also want to inform your electrician of any Ethernet computer connections, security camera or home theater equipment that you want installed. Sometimes the electrician will tackle those jobs and other times they'll want an audiovisual specialist or communications technician to do that work. But just let them know what your plans are. You know, there is so much to talk about with an electrical wiring plan that I think we definitely should do an episode just dedicated to that. One last thing. One thing I've heard that you should tell your electrician, especially if you plan to do a lot of entertaining, is to tell them that you want your house wired so that you don't have any problems, shortages, or blown fuses, even if you have a party on the hottest summer day with the air conditioning on full blast and all your appliances running. In other words, you want enough power so your house will run without issue even on occasions when most of the electrical appliances are running all at once. Okay, now let's talk about what type of information you need to supply the plumbers so that you can get a good solid bid. Just like with the electrician, you can ask the plumber to give you a bid on materials and labor for everything except fixtures. Let them purchase the pipes and hidden technical materials and you can purchase your toilets, sinks, faucets, shower heads, tubs, and other fixtures. If you like, you can tell them whether you prefer copper or plastic pipes. Plastic pipes include PEX and PVC pipes. If you want cast iron waste pipes for quiet toilet flushes, you should request that too. If you're not exactly sure whether you want copper or plastic pipes, and that is whether you want to pay the extra expense for copper pipes, Jose said that it's allowed for us to ask the plumbers to give two bids, both for copper and plastic pipes. Then we can compare prices to see whether we think the extra money for copper is worth it or not. I didn't realize that we could ask the subs to give us prices on more than one option. That's great news for me. We'll also need to tell plumbers about any gas appliances, gas water heaters, gas HVAC equipment or fireplaces. And like I said, whether you want a gas standby generator. Again, remember the plumbers install the gas lines. Jose suggested that we indicate on the house plan and the specifications how large our tubs will be in each bathroom. Plus, we should outline all the appliances that will need water lines, like a steam oven or a fridge with a water dispenser or ice maker. Note if you want a conventional or tankless water heater, and if a recirculating system is important to you. Remember, a recirculating pump gives you almost instant hot water. If you prefer one brand of water heater over another, include that in the specs. You can also ask the plumber to give you bids on a conventional water heater versus a tankless system so you can compare prices. You might want the plumber to purchase the water heater, or you could see if you could beat the price on your own. To learn more about water heaters, take a listen to episode 32, which I'll link to in the show notes. Finally, let's talk briefly about the mechanical subcontractor who will install your heating, cooling, and air conditioning system. You could purchase the system on your own, but most folks end up buying the HVAC system from the dealer, who is usually the mechanical sub. Remember to insist on a manual J calculation so your system is sized properly. If you work with a home energy inspector, then they'll be able to provide that calculation. You'll have to decide what type of HVAC system you want. For example, a furnace or boiler plus an air conditioner or an all-in-one heat pump. If you have a preference of brand, you can indicate that too. Jose said that for most well-known brand names, they're pretty good quality. And he usually chooses a system based on which brand is offering the best warranty. Here's another time where it's okay to ask the subcontractor to give you bids on several different systems so you can compare prices. Ask him also to include the warranty of each brand and system. Make sure you indicate that you're looking for an ENERGY STAR certified system if that's important to you. 
Since most of us are building houses with a tight building envelope, it's important that we also have a ventilation system included in the mechanical bid. The ventilation system allows a tight house to breathe. It takes away stale air and brings in fresh air. You might also mention exhaust fans or your vent hood for your range, although I'm not positive that those fall under the job duties of the mechanical sub. I forgot to ask about that, but just mention it to them just in case. Think about where you'll want those exhaust fans, plus your vents and returns, and mark those on your house plan. If you're planning on getting your house energy rated and having a blower door test performed to test for air and duct leakage, you may want to talk to your mechanical subs about that, since that will necessitate that they're very careful about sealing and insulating your air ducts and installing the mechanical equipment much more thoughtfully than they typically would for a home that only meets the minimal building code requirements. So, to get bids from the major subcontractors, we'll need to give them a house plan marked with what we want and where, both inside and out, and we'll need to indicate that we want a bid on materials and labor for everything except fixtures. And obviously, you'll want the bid to include the cost of installing the fixtures that you've purchased. Now, of course, you don't have to do it this way. But for me, I think this is the way I'm going to go. I think it's a great compromise between giving the experts, the subcontractors, a level of control that I couldn't possibly have and keeping a bit of control for myself. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you learned as much as I did. And I hope you'll join me next time for the next episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.